right away he said, uh, let me see the ball. Uh, you look at the pictures right away. Anyways, he uh, he asked us what we were in there for, and we told him what we thought he might have. He said he spoke with the other doctor, and um, so right away he turned off the lights, got a little camera thing out with the light on it, and he looked at it, and of course Nolan was freaking out because he got all scared. So we had to strap him down on the bed with Velcro, and then he turned off all the lights again and, and uh, got that thing really close and opened his eyes. And um, he was looking there for a few minutes, I looked at the other one, he said, okay. He turned back on the lights, he says, without a shadow of a doubt, he doesn't have retroblastoma or retinoblastoma. He said, this, this looks like um, <laughs> Coach disease. And then, um, so we had a, a jillion questions for him. <laughs> but he said basically it's the, the Coates disease is the blood vessels in the back of the eye they start to leak fluid and it's like a white fluid it's like proteins and other stuff in your body and he said that causes like a basically like a spilled glass of milk on a table he said the milk's no longer there once we stop the the uh, leakage but he said the residue's still there and he said that's why he's getting the blurred vision or he, he doesn't when he covers this this good eye he automatically closes that bad eye because it's he freaks out. He doesn't know what to do. But when we close the bad one, he still looks at it a good one because he's used to that. And so he said, "What we can do through time, after two or three treatments, hopefully, he said this is what our goals are, is to cauterize those bad blood vessels that are leaking that fluid, stop the leaking completely. Once we stop the leaking, to get the the little white milky substance that's in there." He says that what has a tendency to go right in between all of the little nerves and blood vessels, and it sets up right between the the central vision area of what keeps him from seeing, and that's why they get blurred vision in the middle and off to the sides they can still see. He said if it got worse, the fluid keeps filling up, and he says it actually pushes the the uh, the the retina off of the eye or wherever it's at. And he says that, that can cause separation from the retina and the nerve. He said that's when you lose complete vision. He said we don't want that to happen. But he said as of right now, he said there's no, there's barely any fluid down there, you know, stacking up. So he said that's very, very good. He said tell your, your aunt, whoever she is, that she caught it at a perfect time. He says hopefully we can get on top of this and, and take care of it. But after two or three treatments, um, to cauterize those bad, those bad nerves or whatever they are, and then hopefully with exercise, he says almost like working out two different arms. He says if you don't work out one arm, the other arm is going to get weak. He says well the brain automatically because it can't see very good, it'll start shutting down their eye because it doesn't doesn't get good view. He says put a patch on this one and make him exercise that good eye. He says with strength those fluids will start dissipating and absorbing back into the body and there'll be nothing else to leak. He said then, he says hopefully we'll get at least some vision back. He said, but this is what he said. He said he'll never get full vision back again. But that part I don't believe at all. So, but he said the only thing that, that's gonna limit your son from this time on, he says will be uh, flying a commercial airplane, driving a commercial truck or bus, and what does that mean? Uh, join the military. Because you have oh, to have 20 20 20 20 20. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But he said, as of his normal activities as a little boy, he said, <laughs> you'll never know the difference. <laughs> oh, you'll you'll never know the difference. <laughs> and so that's the report from Dr. Ralph. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please hear from Sister White? <laughs> She's just glad to know you're yeah. glad. Yeah. Just, he was Sister Debbie White is just glad he didn't yeah. get on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey kind of already explained, but we are just so thankful to God that He was merciful today and we didn't have to leave with a really bad report. The doctor, of course, he ruled out retina blastoma, so we're thankful for that. And he was able to diagnose him with Coates disease, which is not cancerous and we don't have to worry about chemotherapy and all that. But we, um, there are some precautions that we have to take. We have to protect his good eye and we gotta make sure that this laser treatment gets done and we can stop these vessels from bleeding, from leaking fluid. But um, he said several times, whoever this is, really need to thank God for her because she saved his eye. There's what several what are the treatments consist of that? Um, laser treatment 
and that would consist of he'll have to go under. They'll put him out. It's like a surgery, but it's an in and out surgery. So he said if he can catch it all in three times, that's about what he's thinking. Of the thing. But he said several times that this can't save his eye. So we're thankful for Aunt Colleen, and. We'll be back to Children's Hospital in about 30 weeks to have a little surgery. Just get these procedures started. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. They're still there. If the, the fluid is still there, I'm thinking the next time we go back, yeah. he's going to say, I don't remember what you're here for. Is this the same baby? Yes, and he's the same. How many kids did they give you a date I'm to make that one? No. Um, he said about they're going to contact me. And you can the, change the route. The department is still wanting to get them ready for <laughs> <laughs>